Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, we are back today working on our steam pipe project that we've been working on for a little while for the museum. And today is the day we're gonna go ahead and cut this thing off and uh, start getting ready to put the new flange on that we have made in a previous video. Now, if you're not up to speed with what's going on, this is a steam pipe out of a 1917 uh, Vulcan Ironworks steam locomotive, little 040 small industrial engine, 36 inch gauge, that we use out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. It's a, a functioning uh, steam locomotive. And this is one of the steam pipes up in the front that uh, delivers the steam to the steam engines and it has some issues. Uh, we were doing some maintenance on it last year. So there were some uh, damages done when the, the ear broke off, when the ears broke off, it had been previously uh, broken and, and repaired. Uh, they took it to a place to get fixed and when they fixed it, they actually messed it up even worse. You can go back and watch the previous videos if you wanna catch up on that. But uh, the solution is, is I have made a new flange out of cast iron and we're going to cut the old flange off and put the new flange on. So let me just kind of zoom in here and show you where we're at and what we're gonna do. So both of these ears have been broken previously, been repaired maybe multiple times. I know at least twice now because this one had been broken before. And uh, when they put the new one on, they put a plate of steel on top, tried to weld it in there, didn't work. They ground the precision face off of this when they were trying to clean their weld up. So again, the solution, we're gonna put the new flange on here that's made properly. Um, now, I've had a lot of comments in previous videos from you guys like, oh no, don't cut that thing off. You're gonna get into trouble because you got some areas down here. Guys, I've taken all that into consideration. And uh, while we are gonna cut the front off, I'm not gonna cut the whole depth. I'm only gonna go in about maybe a half an inch. And um, once we kind of figured out, I'm gonna mill out an area on the flange to fit up on here, and then we'll braise it all back in together. But to start with, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lop these ears off, just cut them off. And to do that, I'm gonna use a little uh, handheld band saw to just kind of come in here and get those cut off. Uh, and then we will come in and cut the face off after we get that done. So let me get the band saw out and uh, we'll start cutting some metal here. So I'm just gonna use a little porta saw here, a little band saw, and we're just gonna come down this thing and cut it off. Very good, you can see some porosity in the original casting. Uh, see that? Obviously it wasn't causing any problems, I don't think, but anyway, we're gonna come in here now and cut this side off. Wow, that side appears to be hard from probably where they welded that on there. I'm hoping this thing's gonna cut it. It's not wanting to do much right now. That's not doing anything. And it may have ruined that blade. Um, hmm. Back up and punt here. I may just have to get a cutoff wheel on the grinder and uh, get in there and go at it that way. Let me study on this a few minutes. All right, take two here. We're gonna hit it with a, I got a cutoff wheel, a six inch cutoff wheel uh, on the angle grinder here. And we're gonna see if we can go in there and just slice it off. Both the ears gone now, we're gonna go back to the bandsaw. I put a new blade in here, and uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to come down through this. I'm hoping this edge over here is still not too hard. Uh, if it is, I may get the grinder out and try to grind some of that out. That's one of the reasons I don't like welding on cast iron, stick welding on cast iron, is because it gets the metal so hot 
uh, that the cast iron becomes brittle and that usually becomes a weak point where it will break back away. And as you saw here, it was uh, impossible to cut it with the bandsaw blade um, because of the, the heat treat that basically happened with it. So I'm gonna cut a half inch off of this. I have taken a Sharpie pen and outlined my, my mark so I have some guideline as far as how I wanna go down here and do this. And we're gonna see how she goes. Let's see if this'll, this'll work now. Making sure I'm on my line. It's hard to see it on the top here a little bit. Blade's got a little rough spot in it, but it's cutting good so far. There we go. That wasn't too bad. So let you guys get a little sneak peek here of what we're looking at. Um, cut went good. I got a little bit thick down here on the bottom. I'm just to get the grinder out and we'll uh, we'll grind this out. Also, my ears over here on the side, uh, just couldn't get quite up flush to it. Actually, I didn't want to get quite up right up next to it. I wanted to leave a little bit, so I'm gonna grind all that stuff flush uh, on both sides. Uh, real happy with the amount of cast iron material we have here around the steam pipe. I know I had several comments from folks saying, hey, you're gonna, you know, cut it out and there's gonna be a big hole back here in the back. And like I said, I had looked at that already pretty closely and I was really comfortable that we were gonna be okay. But, you know, it's always reassuring when you get in here and, and you see plenty of metal in there. So everything looks good there. You know, one thing I wanna point out here is this is that side that they had welded this ear on right here. And uh, again, this is the cast iron bottom. Actually, part of that had been replaced with steel that had broken about right here. This backside was steel, this was cast iron. That was a previous repair. And then the guy that did the repair last time, he welded this piece of steel on top of it. And uh, you know, the weld went great steel to steel. And I believe it was a nickel uh, weld just kind of cutting through it. It was really hard to go through that weld, but everything that went to the cast iron, I mean, it just, it did not stick at all. It just, it, it was uh, just broke right off. And also, I, I, again, I mentioned it a while ago, but when you, when you stick weld this stuff, it, it gets the cast iron so hot and melt, actually melts the cast iron. And when you do that, you change the physical properties of that cast iron it becomes very brittle, which is why, one of the big reasons why I don't like to weld on cast iron. It can be done, uh, don't get me wrong. It, you know, there's lots of people that, that do it, do it successfully all the time, but I'm just not a big fan of it. But anyway, that was the, the ear that was so screwed up. I've gotten through now, doing a little massaging with the grinder, just again, getting these sides down and getting everything to shape uh, a little bit better in there. I had to uh, take a little bit off the bottom. It was a little bit thick down there, but I had still have my scribe line when I was uh, able to go by. But this is pretty much ready. I've also kind of cleaned up around the edges. Uh, I'm gonna have to have a nice clean surface when I get ready to braise this. So hopefully we may do a little bit more grinding on that before it's all said and done. I'll also put a little bit of a bevel on the inside here. I need to get in here and try to clean this lime scale out. Um, I'm not sure, I may try to come in and braise on the inside some if I can get in there, but uh, I'm gonna have to make sure that lime scale's out of there before we try that. So where we're at, I think this is pretty much now prepped uh, to go back into the locomotive, at least to, to start doing some dry fitting and figure out what we're gonna do next. So the flange is going on here. The thickness of the flange is one inch. We only took a half inch off the face. So my game plan is, is that I'm actually gonna mill out an area in here where this will kind of sit down in there and then I can braise around it uh, to get it all put back in there like it needs to be. Before I start milling this out though, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this out to the, to the museum. I'm gonna do a dry installation. We're gonna go ahead and, and mount it up on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and put all my, my spacers, my steam pipe rings that go in here. And I'm gonna get some measurements on what this gap is on the bottom. And that will help me know how, exactly how much I need to cut out of this to get a nice fit. 
Uh, so that's the next step on there. I will probably be doing that tomorrow. And when we do, we'll take you guys out there with us and show you that process. Bring you guys up to speed of where we're at. Uh, I've been crawling around inside this smoke box here for a while now, getting everything kind of in place, making some measurements, coming up with a game plan. And it's just so tight in here, I didn't shoot a lot of video of it, but I did want to kind of give you a, a peek at what we're doing. So we came in and I mounted the steam pipe in the here, mounted up on the top bolts, uh, just like it's going to go when it's all said and done. Of course, my bottom flange uh, was cut off. So I had plenty of room down here on the bottom. It was just kind of free floating around. Right now I've got the flange just kind of sitting down here on the bottom, just so you can kind of see. And you can see there's a little bit of gap here in the front. There's actually a bigger gap in the back. And I, I figured out that that cut was not flat compared to where it needs to be. So um, I have gone in and made some measurements on all four corners, basically measuring from the bottom up down here. I put some uh, a little adjustable parallels in there. See these little one of these little things here that slides up and down. So I did that on each corner and got a measurement. So I know, you know, how much off I am. So basically I'm going to use the lowest one or the highest one, whatever you want to call it, as my zero. And uh, when I get this back out, I'm just going to probably use the grinder. I'll put a line around here and we'll get that relatively flat. Uh, it's kind of nice because it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. This thing actually has some built-in adjustment. Uh, to let you kind of, if we were kind of self-align uh, as long as you're in the ballpark and that basically works. Uh, I don't have it in here right now, but this is a this is one of the old steam pipe rings. This is a radius on the bottom and there's kind of a matching radius up underneath this thing and it kind of fits in there like a ball joint. So, you know, if the lineman is off a little bit or it moves a little bit, it, it self-aligns. So uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty neat system the way they got this here. So uh, bottom line of where we're at, I've got my measurements on here to get this bottom flat. Uh, I know that on the back side, I've got a, it's, it's, I got the exact number. It's roughly three eighths of an inch gap back there. Uh, and so we're gonna have to actually take some metal off of this side and so forth. Now the, the steam pipe ring sits up underneath it. The original one comes up about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. Um, well, you got a little bit coming down here, but actual, the actual height is about three quarters of an inch. Like I said, I got three eighths on the back, so that's going to basically raise all this up by three eighths. I think what we're going to do is we're going to notch this out by three eighths. That'll raise the whole piece up by three quarters of an inch. will be just right for a steam pipe ring. And I'm going to make a new steam pipe ring. And before we do that, I'll come in here. We'll set everything back up once everything is brazed in place at the very end and uh, I will make sure that that's the, the correct measurement. We can make that thickness whatever it needs to be. That's another little adjustment that I have up my sleeve for down the road. Uh, but again, just wanted to kind of give you a quick update of where we are. Uh, I, I, I scribed on here roughly where the, the steam pipe's gonna fit in there and I pulled it out. It's right on center, so I'm good there. And again, we have a little bit of play in this swing in this direction. Those bolts up there will kind of rock a little bit. I got it you know, pretty much where it needs to be. Uh, but if, if it, you know, is off a little bit one way or the other, again, you kind of got that alignment going on and this uh, ball joint will adjust up underneath it. But that's where we're at. Uh, my next step now is to get out of here, turn the camera off, and we're gonna have to take all this back out, take it back to the shop, regrind the bottom of this, uh, mill that notch into the flange, and then bring it back out here, set it all back up with the steam pipe or with the steam pipe ring in place and we'll tack her in place and then go back and braise it. So progress being made. Let me get back to work. Not room for y'all to see it in here, unfortunately. Well, guys, I'm back in my shop now and you can kind of see I have put a line on here of the material we need to cut off. So, um, you know, I noticed when we did this that this front end was at a little bit of an angle. It wasn't quite 90 degrees, and I don't know exactly why it's that way, but it's looking like it needs to be at 90 degrees uh, to in, in relationship to the piece up here, So, which is why I think we have this angle going on. Anyway, it doesn't really matter why or how or anything else. What I do know, though, is that we need to take a little bit more material off of one side. This back side on this, this is the front side that you were looking at in the locomotive. And it was pretty uniform. I mean, it's off a few thousandths, but I mean, it's fairly uniform from one side to the other. Same thing in the back. Top and bottom was about the same 
height up, but we needed some more over here. So I'm going to zip that off. And I think to do that, I'm just going to, I'm going to probably just use the, the cutting wheel and then probably get in here and grind it out the rest of the way. All right, cut off wheel. Let's see how this works. All right, that went worked pretty good. I have to do a little bit. I, I purposely cut shy of the line, uh, just so I can, I'm gonna come in here with the grinder and do that. But that kind of gets the biggest bulk of that off. And uh, for cutting this, guys, this is one of those Osborne uh, cutoff wheels that uh, Osborne sent me to try out. So far, I've been pretty impressed with them. Uh, they they're holding up great. That's the biggest thing. I mean, as far as cutting, I can't say they're cutting better or worse, but they seem to be holding up real nice, which is a a nice plus. So. All right, I'm gonna probably do the rest of this off camera. You see what I'm after though. I'm just trying to get down to that line and we're just gonna grind that out the rest of the way with the regular uh, angle grinder. Ready now to modify our flange here to make it where it's ready to kind of fit up on there now that we know where we wanna be. Um, I've already kind of laid it out on here about where I want it. I've measured the, the maximum width of that, uh, the, the, the pipe over there and to give me just a little bit of clearance room in there, wiggle room to uh, get everything just where it needs to be. And so I have a place for some braids to fit down into as well. Uh, it needs to have a basically a slot in here that's three and three quarter inches wide. And I want my depth to be three eighths of an inch depth based on the measurements that we were able to make in the locomotive. So I've got the part just bolted down directly to the milling machine table. It's kind of an irregular shaped Part and at first I was just going to try to put it in the vise and and was having some difficulty to figure out how to properly clamp it and I said heck we'll just bolt it down the table I got plenty of room so we just moved the vise over and here we are got my end mill set up on the center of the hole and I know that I need to go an inch and a half in either direction it's a three quarter inch diameter end mill so uh, that should give me a three and three quarter inch wide uh, slot when we're through so. So raise my table up until we touch off. Hopefully not in front of the camera too bad. Alright. Zero that out. I think I'm gonna go a hundred thousandths on my depth to start with and uh, see how that cuts. We may try to go a little bit more as we go through here and I need to grab some more. Put a little oil on here to help move things up. All right, less than time here. So I shut the camera off and I'm milling away and um, my end mill wasn't cutting quite up to my expectations. So I went and grabbed another one. The first one was a little bit on the dull side. Put a new end mill in here, continued on cutting. Uh, got back down to depth on this first pass, came out, moved over to the second pass, go back in and I noticed something. Let me zoom in here and show you this. See the little step right here? The, this pass was deeper than the first pass. What happened? My end mill slipped. I didn't get it tight enough in the collet. I'm making a real heavy cut. This thing is wanting to pull down because of the way it's, uh, it's kind of like that screw action going on there. And as I've been cutting along, that end mill was creeping down just a little bit at a time. Fortunately, I'm not to my final depth here, so it's not a big deal. I can, this is gonna disappear completely but I wanted to show this to you because this is real stuff that happens. But the real irony in this right here is that uh, while I was off camera, part of the reason why I stopped the camera is I started getting a bunch of text messages on my phone and there's a, uh, another, uh, let's just say, well-known YouTube machinist that I communicate with via text quite a, often. In fact, there's a little a group of us that uh, are constantly sending stuff back and forth to one another. 
And not five minutes before this, I'm not going to call out his name. I'll let him do that himself. He'll probably show it in one of his videos. But not five minutes before this, he'd shown a piece of work that he was working on today where he messed up a, a keyway. Exact same thing happened. And he actually had to go in and uh, even it out on the bottom, but then make a custom key to fit that keyway that he cut a little bit too deep because his end mill slipped. It is very ironic because I'm, I'm serious, guys. It, it, there was not five minutes from the time that I received that text message until this happened. And of course, I've already sent a text message back to him and say, look, uh, it happened to me too. Uh, anyway, I thought that was kind of funny, but watch this kind of stuff. When you're doing milling, particularly heavy milling, your end mill can slip if that happens. I'm gonna stop now. We're gonna make sure everything's good and tight. And uh, I might be a little bit less aggressive on the rest of these cuts. Uh, to make sure it doesn't happen again. Let me get back to work. Well, I think we are about ready to take this piece and get her raised on. So I got my slot in. I've done a little bit of grinding on here, just doing some weld prep, putting some angles in here, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, did a little bit more massaging over here on the steam pipe uh, to get everything to fit. But as you can see, the flange comes up here very nicely, fits in place nicely. The, Holes line up as good as you can. As you can see, that's not a round circle in here in this casting, uh, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. I mean, it's, it's a near perfect match. Um, it's gonna be good enough anyway. So this is ready to go out to the museum and we'll line everything back up again, tack her in place, and I'm gonna come in here and we'll do a real good brazing job on this. Uh, that's gonna be coming up in another video, but I think the flange part at least making it is all done and we're ready to move on to the next step with that that's going to be a wrap uh, as always as thank you guys for watching and thank you for keeping up with this project i know some of you guys have uh, let me know you're really enjoying this one so uh, anyway this one's been a little bit of fun been some challenges but uh, we're making progress and getting into the short roads here hopefully gonna have this thing ready to go back in pretty quick because uh they're gonna be ready to fire this thing up in about two weeks and have her ready to go so that's the plan anyway Okay, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And uh, comments, emails, all that stuff if you like as well. And uh, we'll talk to you next time around. Thanks for watching.